Hi, it's Jamie and Jeremy from Gilbrook Farm. And today we're going to talk about our chicken coop setup, how it's set up, some of the decisions we made for the design of how it's all set up, some of the costs involved, and things we would do different if we had to do them over again. When we were looking into getting chickens, uh, one of the things that we felt very strongly about was the ability for our chickens to free range. However, uh, we have some difficulties based on our property. Uh, one of those is that we live on one acre in which the majority of that one acre is our front yard, which means we have houses and a road out front. Um, so putting up any permanent structures or anything in the front yard is not really uh, a viable option for us. The other thing is that we live on a very wooded lot. Um, so we have a lot of obstacles in our way as far as trees. And as far as the soil is concerned, there are a lot of rocks in the soil. So these are all things that we wanted to take into consideration when getting chickens. So for us, uh, there was really only one option. Putting up a permanent structure um, was, was not a viable option. And we know we needed to go with some sort of mobile coop. Um, however, with the mobile coop, we knew we would be very, very limited in um, the amount of chickens that we could have and also in the amount of space that they would have. So we knew that that's going to need to be ex expanded somehow. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about some of the decisions we made with that. The first is going to be our coop setup. So when we were researching building a mobile coop, I looked on the internet and uh, researched just about every design I could find. And some of them were good, some of them not so good. I kind of mashed them all together and made this design. And uh, this ended up costing about $500. Uh, all materials, hardware, roofing, hardware cloth, everything. It was about $500. You can definitely build one cheaper uh, if you can find recycled materials. Um, I wanted to build an, one brand new just for the go through the process of building one. And um, I, wanted to, I wanted it to be new so that I could be sure that it would be sturdy enough to be uh, mobile. Uh, and not fall apart. So the whole thing is uh, about six and a half feet tall so you can walk in it, 12 feet long, four and a half, uh, five feet wide, um, it is completely wrapped in half inch hardware cloth instead of chicken wire because chicken wire is about has one inch holes in it and snakes can get in there and you don't want anything getting in it especially when your chickens are young and you're just getting them outside and introducing them to the coop. So that's why everything is half inch hardware cloth. Okay, when I was designing this to be mobile, uh, the only thing I knew was that I had two old shelf brackets made out of two inch square steel tube. Um, and that's what I wanted to use as my pivot points. And then I bought uh, a couple dolly tires and used a piece of chain link fence top rail as an axle and a chain link fence post as sort of a handle. So we ended up with this. So you just rotate this down, which lifts the coop. And then we have this slide lock that holds it. Now, if I had to do this over, the most important thing I would do over differently would be larger wheels. You can see there's enough gap down here when it's raised that I could make a quite a bit bigger wheel, probably another four inches in diameter, which would give me more lift because our ground is very uneven and sometimes it kind of just bottoms out. And then we end up having to put it on two by fours and run it. So I'm gonna put larger wheels on here. Now the whole thing is two by fours and the hen house is OSB. Uh, I would use OSB again, just make sure that it's painted very well so it doesn't get wet and uh, fall apart. Uh, everything else is two by fours. There's a door on each side so that it's easy to clean out. Just open that up. Scrape it out. Shingles on the roof. Shingles on the uh, nest boxes. Now one other thing I would do differently is I built this so that this whole thing falls down so you, you could easily clean out the nest boxes and we've never used it. We've never had to uh, 
open this up because you can really easily get to the nest boxes through the side doors. So this was just kind of a waste of time, but it was a good exercise. And the nest boxes are here, they're one foot square. And then again, this thing would fall down and this whole thing is like a transformer. Okay, so for water, we had a, one of the waterers that just sits on the ground with an upside down jug that fills the rim. And the chickens just kept kicking leaves and dirt and all kinds of mess in there. And we ended up having to change the water out two or three times a day. So I got some chicken nipples from Amazon for about five bucks for a pack of 10. Then we just modified a food grade bucket for their water. And they learned how to use that real quick. You just kind of show them what it does and they go over and they're real curious. They'll figure it out. Then they have a stump that they play on. We stuck that in here when they were younger and now they just, that's their, their toy. They like it. Then they have a flock block, which is a, a solid block of uh, seeds and corn and all kinds of ch things chickens love. Hey, Tommy. Now their feeders are made out of four inch PVC with just a Y connector. Um, and we put little caps on them at night and they just have little bungee cords holding them on so that when we move the coop, just lift it up, move the whole coop. And then you're good to go. Now, if you're gonna build one like this, I would recommend, see we put a uh, extension in here that keeps them from digging it all out and throwing it all over the ground. That seems like an extra inch uh, beyond what this size is. Works out well. Also, we block the bottom off so that the, a bunch of food doesn't sit down there and get moldy because they won't be able to reach it. So as much of that bottom as you can block off, that, that's definitely something I would do. I would recommend doing. Now this is just a little spice tin with uh, calcium in it for uh, when they get ready to start laying, they start craving calcium and uh, helps them produce their eggshells. And so we always keep as much of that there as they want. Then over here we have their little grit pan for uh, as much grit as they want. Now when I originally built this, I used OSB also for this ramp. Don't do that. Uh, after about six months, it just you know gets wet and has chickens on it all the time and it just kind of bowed and so I just built this one out of half inch plywood uh, and it's working a lot better and these are just stakes they're about four inches apart I would recommend um, maybe putting less distance when your chickens are younger so that because their feet are smaller and it's quite a bit for them to get up something this big with that much space when they're when they're little and then the door just slides. Chickens go to bed at night, tuck them in, wake them up in the morning, out they come. This also has a couple vent vents built in for the summertime, so they have a lot more ventilation. You can take these panels out, but in the wintertime I just keep them blocked off so they helps keep them warm and then the whole thing has you know air circulation there's a gap up here between the roof and the front wall which is about an inch which helps you know ventilate the whole thing okay so now I'm going to talk a little bit about fencing when our chickens were little uh, when they were first uh, brought here on day three up until about three weeks of old we kept them in the house at first they were in a plastic bin and then we moved them to a big cardboard box but about three weeks they're starting to get pretty flappy birdish and they're trying to fly out and even though we put something over it, they're just kind of picking on each other and they were ready to move. 
Uh, by that time, it was midsummer, and so having this mobile coop was the perfect solution because we felt pretty secure in sticking them in the coop, closing the door, and letting them just stay in that area. Now, we did end up moving the coop whenever they needed fresh grass, whenever they started um, you know, pooping a lot and scratching it up. So we ended up moving the coop all around the yard. And that worked out really well up until about eight weeks of age. By eight weeks of age, they pretty much have outgrown this area and they needed a bigger area. So that's when we turned to a poultry net. So what we ended up going with was a uh, poultry net from Premier One. Now this is the 164 foot poultry net it's 42 inches high. The reason we went with that is because we wanted as much space as possible. Now, if you've watched any other videos or reviews on the Premier One fencing, um, the biggest problem with these fences is sagginess. And uh, sure enough, um, this is more of a problem here on our property because it's so uneven. Uh, the kit that we bought was the 164 foot uh, single spike, um, poultry fencing that ended up having four poles. Now, my biggest regret is that I didn't buy more poles. Uh, what we ended up doing was carving up some sticks and we used that to kind of prop up the fence, but really, uh, I really wish I would have had more of those poles and to order them now it would just cost more in shipping to send it to me. But if you guys go to order that fence, the 164, definitely order yourself probably an additional six to eight poles. Uh, you're gonna want them. We did not go with the gate, and I see absolutely no reason to go with the, with the gate. Uh, what we do is we just use this as our entrance. This is where the, um, the fence comes together, and we just tie it when we want to keep them in, and uh, we can connect, connect the fence here for the charge. And that's our entrance, in and out. Uh, I'm obviously too small to go over the fence. You might have some taller people that can go over, but for me, it's just as simple to undo this and uh, use this as our gate. As far as moving the fence, it probably takes us um, about 15, 20 minutes to, to move the fence. Sometimes it's easier uh, than other times, in particular when it's really dry in the summertime, it's really hard to get those posts in. So having a soft mallet really helps in, in pounding in these posts. As far as weight, for me, um, the fence is a little bit heavy. I end up having to drag it across the ground. It's, it's kind of heavy to lift, um, but certainly I can do it myself uh, without any assistance if need be. Uh, the biggest downfall with this fence that I would have to, I would have to say is besides the sagginess, when it does rain, if you get a nice torrential rain and you have soft soil, the fence will collapse. Um, which can be a problem if you have a lot of predators in the area that uh, may be coming in at that particular time when uh, the fence has collapsed. You really have to keep an eye on it. So if you have to go to work during the day and you have a big torrential rain, um, your animals could potentially get out for, for sure on that one. So that's just something to keep in mind. That would be the biggest downfall, but I would definitely go with this fence again overall. So as far as charging a fence, there are a couple different ways to uh, electrify your fence. Um, some of them involve running a power cord out to your, uh, your charger, and we, didn't, we knew we weren't going to be able to do that. Uh, just because we were going to be moving it all around the yard, that's just not very practical. So we knew we know, needed to go with a solar charging charged unit. We went with the um, IntelliShock PRS I-25. This puts out uh, 0.25 joules and I believe that's somewhere around the vicinity of 4,000 volts uh, when it's fully charged. This holds a really good charge in the summertime. In the fall and winter, which we're at right now, uh, I'd say probably about once a week I have to charge it. To charge it during the day, I bring it in the house and I plug it into a wall unit. Uh, there's a little um, plug on the side here. You just plug it in, let it charge all day, and then it's good to go for about another week uh, with the ambient light that you get for throughout the day. The other thing with the IntelliShock is that instead of having a constant voltage, this has a pulse, uh, pulse unit, so it sends out pulses of electricity throughout the fence. So as far as cost, uh, the fence costs about $175 and the IntelliShock I-25 was about $200. It's quite a hefty investment into poultry, so if this is something that you're considering, definitely keep that in mind that there is a hefty investment in that. Uh, would I go with it again? Absolutely in a heartbeat. This, this is definitely the right option for us. 
So there you go guys, this is our backyard chicken poultry setup and why we made the decisions we made and some of the decisions we would change if we had to do it again. If you guys find this information beneficial, like and subscribe. Um, if you guys have any tips or tricks or any information on your own property or things that you did, leave those below. And if you have any questions or comments, leave those below as well. We'll try and answer as best we can. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.